Hello, welcome to Literary Life and welcome to my unboxing for April's Book of the Month Club selections. Now, first of all, I am floored that they not only did they get out April have April selections, but mine came at the usual time. Um, and given everything going on right now with the COVID virus, um, I, I'm just absolutely shocked. Uh, there are five monthly selections and for those of you that would like to sign up for the first time, I will have a link below. I think you get your first book for five dollars. Um, I did use both of my accounts this month. Um, just as a side note, I know this created some confusion. Add-ons were very limited for this month due to COVID. Um, they are simply limiting inventory so that they can minimize the staff I think having the amount of time that people need to be there and the amount of staff that they have to have to move product, get everything packaged, right? So um, just know that things aren't, you know, we don't have all the options right now that we normally would have. Um, but hey, they got some of our selections to us and we got our monthlies. I still can't even believe they, they, they did it. Um, so there you go. Um, okay, so... First thing, okay, so this is funny because these are not wrapped. Again, not critiquing, they got them out. Um, so normally with Book of the Month Club, you have your things come saran wrapped with your board that shows your order selections. You get your little bookmark, um, but they got my selections right. So they did it. I'm impressed. Great job, Book of the Month Club, uh, in the time of COVID. So I'm going to talk to you first about the books I selected. I did select four out of the five this month, and then I'll fill you in on the one I did not select. So let's get rolling. Put all this stuff to the side. All right. The first book was The Paris House, this beautiful green cover by Alex George. Um, so this book is set in Paris, 1927. Our main character, Josephine Baker, dances with Ernest Hemingway. Maurice Ravel plays a lonely piano and Gertrude Stein hosts her legendary salons. Yet alongside these creative geniuses, a quartet of ordinary men and women are forging their own extraordinary stories. Since the death of her beloved employer, housemaid Camille, has lived with a secret. When Marcel Proust asked her to burn his notebook, she saved one for herself. Now it has disappeared and she is desperate to recover it before her betrayal is revealed. Across town, lovesick painter, Gwil something I can't pronounce, or yeah, we're just <laughs> gonna move on, is also racing against the clock with only a few more hours to repay a debt that threatens to bury him alive. Seren, an Armenian refugee seeking connection in a city that has never felt like home, performs puppet shows for children while, while Seren relentlessly relives his tragic past. Journalist Jean-Paul is unable to confront his own, searching for his missing daughter in every stranger's face. As the hours tick toward midnight, the city of light pulls these four characters even closer until their paths collide in an unforgettable climax. Symphonic and profound, the Paris Hours shows us that even the forgotten residents of Paris are as dazzling as the glorious city they inhabit. So this story, I believe, all takes place in one day, which I thought was really intriguing. I love that. So here is the author himself. I love his glasses, like kind of, <laughs> but anyway, um, he is a native of England. He read law at Oxford University and worked for eight years as a co corporate lawyer in London and Paris. He's lived in the Midwest of the United States for the last 16 years. Welcome to the Midwest. He is the founder and director of the Unbound Book Festival, I have to check that out, and the owner of Skylark Bookshop, an independent bookstore in downtown Columbia, Missouri. Very cool. The Unbound Book Festival, note to self. All right, so that book is one of my selections. The next one, a lot of people have been talking about this book, Valentine by Elizabeth Wetmore. So this one's set in February 1976, Odessa, Texas. It stands on the cusp of the next great oil boom. 
While the townsmen embrace the coming prosperity, its women intimately know fear and violence and all, that always seems to follow it. In the early hours of the morning after Valentine's Day, 14-year-old Gloria Ramirez appears on the front porch of Mary Rose Whitehead's ranch house, broken and barely alive after a vicious attack in a nearby oil field. This act of brutality is tried in the churches and bar rooms of Odessa before it can reach a court of law. When justice is evasive, what is Grayson doing back there? <laughs> when you guys just let me know if I should be concerned. I'll keep reading. When justice is evasive, the stage is set for a showdown with potentially devastating consequences. Valentine is a haunting exploration of the intersections of violence and race, class and region, and a story that plums the depths of darkness and fear yet offers a window into beauty and hope told through the alternating points of view, which we know I love, of indelible characters who burrow deep in the reader's heart. This fierce, unflinching, and surprisingly tender novel illuminates women's strength and vulnerability and reminds us, us that it is the stories we tell ourselves that keep us alive. Let's get Grayson. All right, so Elizabeth Wetmore, there is the author there. She's a graduate of Iowa's Writer Workshop. Her fictions appeared in several publications, um, literary journals. She's won some fellowships. She's a native of West Texas, and she lives and works in Chicago. Hey, um, awesome. I wonder what she does in Chicago. Okay, I'm, I'm in the burbs of Chicago, so that's why I'm curious about. She's a local writer. All right, so that was one of my other selections. Next one, I don't think most of you will be surprised that the guest list by Lucy Foley was one of my choices for this month. This one is on a remote island off the coast of Ireland. Guests gather to celebrate the wedding of Jules Keegan and Will Slater. Will is a rising television star, handsome and charming. Jules is a smart, ambitious magazine publisher. Though the sea is a little choppy and the cell service spotty, <laughs> two things you just don't want at a wedding. I just think that's funny. Their wedding is everything you'd expect of a young power couple. Designer dress, four-tiered cake, boutique whiskey, vintage champagne. Every detail has been curated to perfection. All that's left to orchestrate is the happiness. But perfection is for plans, and people are all too human. It's not long after the cake is cut and the champagne popped that resentments and petty jealousies come out. Worse yet, the latest barometer reading shows the weather has shifted from fair to changeable and dark clouds are looming overhead. Everyone on the island has a secret, everyone has a motive, and someone won't leave this wedding alive. <laughs> That's cracking me up. All right, so there's there's the author there, which my camera will not focus. There we go, Lisa Foley. She studied English Lit at Durham University and University College London. She worked for several years as a fiction editor in the publishing industry. She's the author of The Book of Lost and Found, The Invitation, and The Hunting Party. And I, God, I can't remember. They're all ringing a bell, and I don't know that I've read any of them. She lives in London. I'm going to have to look those up. If you've read any of those, I feel like I've heard her mentioned her books over and over and over again. Um, like, they're really just trending right now. So, like, especially The Hunting Party. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to totally have to look them up. So that was the third one. Okay, fourth selection, which if those of you that know the fifth, you'll know all five. You'll know which one I did not choose for this month. I almost did. I really almost did. But I got The Library of Leg Legends by Jamie Chang. Look at how beautiful this cover is. Isn't this absolutely stunning? I loved, loved this design. All right, so this one is China, 1937. When Japanese bombs began falling on the city of Nanking, 19-year-old Hu Lian, I'm probably mispronouncing that too, and her classmates in Mingwa, Mingwu, Mingwu University are ordered to flee. Leon and a convoy of students, faculty, and staff must walk a thousand miles to safety, a journey marred by the constant threat of aerial attack. 
and it is not just the refugees who are at risk. The group has been entrusted with the priceless treasure, a 500-year-old collection of myths and folklore known as the Library of Legends. Leon finds friendship and a cautious romance with a handsome and wealthy Lu Xiaoming, but after one classmate is murdered and another arrested, Leon realizes she must escape before family, a family secret puts her in danger. Accompanied by Xiao and the enigmatic maidservant Sparrow, Leon makes her way to Shanghai, hoping to reunite with her mother. On the journey, Leon learns of the connection between her two companions and a tale of from the library of library of legends. See, I can't even pronounce library right, guys. Um, this revelation comes with the profound consequences. For as the ancient books travel across China, they awaken immortals and guardian spirits who embark on an exodus of their own, one that changes the country's fate forever. So there is the author, and she was born in Taiwan. She's lived in the Philippines, Iran, Thailand, New Zealand, and Canada. Wow, that's a lot of places. Okay, she is the graduate of the Writer Studio Program at Simon Fraser University and the author of Three Souls and Dragon Springs Road, which I did read Dragon Springs Road. Um, I I, I didn't love it. I loved the premise of it. I don't think I liked the ending. I'm trying to remember. I really liked the characters of the plot, but not like the way it ended, I think. I'll have to look back at my, my um, summation of it. Um, God, yeah, it's been a while on that one. Uh, so yeah, that's why I remember I I knew that, but I I knew I liked her like writing, so I wanted to I wanted to pick this one up as well. So the fifth book um, that I did not get was was a romance, and it was called Beach Read, um, and essentially is about two writers, very different styles. Um, one basically is romance, happy ending every time. Um, the other one is a writer of literary fiction and kills off all his characters in his books. And the two come together to this writing retreat, have a beach house right next to each other, um, and basically have a task of having to like write a book for each other and then fall in love. It does sound like it can be cute and fun for those that are fans of romance. I just knew chances were good with the million books I'm still trying to get through that I would read it and for me it would be just eh, because I'm just not a romance reader. So there we have it. That was it for Book of the Month Club. But cheers to them even pulling it off for this month and got me all fought for my selections and quickly, quickly. So that is it. Um, if you are a Book of the Month Club subscriber, let me know what you selected this month. I'm always curious. Um, and if you were able to pull off add-ons, um, which ones you grabbed. And other than that, um, until the next, let's go read some books. Happy reading.